In this video, I'm going to guide you through a process to rebuild trust and intimacy and break patterns that are happening in your love life. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Kevin Crenshaw. I go by The Heart Guy, and I help people with matters of the heart, intimacy and relationships being a few of those things. This video is actually week four in a 12-week series that used to be a $3,000 course that's for free on YouTube right now for you. I think a lot of stuff on YouTube is educational and that can be amazing, but there's not transformational stuff on YouTube and I really want to start changing that. And this video specifically goes deep into a transformational process. And also I felt called to just contribute and give back after I realized how much was given to me over the past 10 years in my own journey. And this video and releasing this, this course for free is a big part of that. It's my honor and pleasure to bring this to you. And without further ado, here's me from 2019. Oh, if you believe everything happens for a reason, then that also means that life is happening for you and not to you. And that means that, oh, I cannot be the victim. My mom used to tell me, oh my God, like the world isn't against you, Kevin. And I was like, I don't think the world's against me. What do you, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but I did. And when I was able to shift that perspective, it was like, wait, everything happens for a reason. Nothing is just coincidence. And that means life could happen for me. And what is life doing? What's well, building my character? Quite literally character development if, of, of a book. I'm, it's building me. So I'm building me in having these experiences with these people. Something about my, my heart being attracted to their heart and our spirits engaging in time helped me to become more aware of myself or it, it gave me something to become better because you're always going to repeat or you're going to evolve. And so when you can look at it and go, huh, I can actually evolve past being cheated on three times in a row. I can evolve past trust issues. I can evolve past being a victim. I can evolve past throwing pity parties all the fucking time. I can evolve past all that stuff. I don't have to stay stuck in it. Well, that's from showing up here and not your hurt. But, you know, we've already been covering that in this program. So uh, before we dive into things, do want a, a few like reminders and I'm just want to recap some of the stuff that we've been going on in the program. This is week four. So we're closing out on the end of the first month. It's kind of crazy and you've made a lot of progress really fast. Now, a lot of people are probably thinking, oh my God, are we going to cry in every single one of these videos? This is just, ah. It's the crying stuff is ending. Um, the healing part, the forgiveness part, you're like climbing out of that portion and we're going into shaping the new you um, after week five. So just to give you an idea for where you're at in the program, you're not going to be crying in every single video for the three months, <laughs> but um, I, where I'm hitting you with the forgiveness stuff first and with the healing stuff first, because that's what needs to happen in order to, to, to build on. It's the foundational stuff, right? We got to pay attention to the deeper stuff so that we can build upon it. Um, so your foundation really matters and that's what we're covering first. So did want to say that. Also, if you haven't done week three yet, make sure you do week three because you're healing generations worth of work. You're doing the work for your ancestry, quite literally. Um, so make sure you do that. <laughs> that's some pretty deep and profound stuff. Uh, it, you know, whether you think that it's just kind of some exercise you did in a program with this guy or whatever, it is really deep if you actually plug into the work and are present with what you're doing. Um, Cause you don't have to pass down what you've been given in this life. You can actually cut the pattern um, and take it upon yourself to do the work uh, so that you can change the trajectory of your family tree. It's what you did in week three, okay? So it's pretty heavy stuff. Make sure you do it. Um, it's pretty profound. Now we're gonna do the work on your heart again and um, open it up, surgery, and we're cutting the cords with all of your past lovers or anybody who has been close to your heart and shaped your self-worth. Now, I know we covered like caregivers and parents last week. Now we're gonna be covering your exes or again, anybody close that shaped your past love life or your love story. So. I also want to mention before we jump into this real fast that forgiveness is not just a one-time thing. Uh, it is deep work and it's like, it's profound, but at the same time, forgiveness is it's like, it's not like, okay, I did a forgiveness exercise. Now I'm 
everything's healed in its uh, unicorns and rainbows, like it will be that for a time. And then something else might come up and you might have to revisit it. You have access to this program for the rest of your life. So yay, you can go back and do these programs or the processes, the weeks, you know the system, you know what's, what's here. So revisit it. I've revisited some of this stuff multiple times and maybe I didn't have to do the exercises again just as, but um, I did have to, you know, oh, awareness, okay. Like that's an old pattern of mine, that's an old wound. Thanks for trying to keep me safe, but hey, I'm gonna act out of my heart and not my hurt. We've been covering all this stuff. But again, um, I'm just really proud of you for making it this far in the program and actually doing this deep work and showing up for yourself. Hello, you've been showing up for yourself for a month. You've probably experienced lots of changes and are noticing some things change really fast in your life. That's gonna continue and we're gonna keep on that path. Um, but again, the deeper healing, crying, all this crazy stuff that's happening uh, is going to be um, over with at the end of next week. Uh, that's really the deeper cleaning. And then we're going to be building on that new blank canvas, if you will, and painting the masterpiece of your new love story. And we're going to then create that and magnetize it to your life by becoming the one and not just looking for the one. So let's jump into things. Everything happens for a reason. Character development. There's a book uh, with your name on it. That is your life. And the past doesn't have to equal the future. It's being written as we are experiencing life right now. So you're the author. Um, so far, life has been happening to me. And I don't know. And I'm being pushed around and all these things. I'm trying to figure it out. Blah, 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 blah. Well, what has it been teaching you? All the pressure and all the trauma and all the stuff has been guiding you and sculpting you. It's literally been the forge of your existence to sculpt you into the person who can then contain what you're asking for. So I believe, you know, if you've been, if you've gone through a lot, like the dark night of the soul, then you really have a huge desire or a huge mission to help people and love Maybe that huge mission is changing your ancestral history. And that means you have to kind of be a certain quality of a person. You know, there's, um, it's, it's, think about it like a pot. If you want to be, if you've ever done um, pottery, in order for the clay to be a finished product, you have to be put through fire. And if that pot then is broken, in Chinese uh, culture, I forgot what it's called, but they repair it with gold because they think it's more beautiful after it was been broken. That's what we're doing with you. So just know that you're showing up for yourself, you're doing the work, and the only one that can hurt you is you. The only person that's ever betrayed you is you by not being there for yourself and by projecting onto other people what you lack within you and now you're not showing up for yourself we're gonna learn all that stuff. And we're actually gonna dig into our past love story and not just be aware of the patterns, but now we're gonna learn the lessons that life has been screaming at us to learn. We're actually gonna see that and learn the lessons because we're always either repeating or we get a chance to evolve and it's time to evolve into your new love story. If you so choose, it's just an opportunity, you know. So week one. We covered your past love story and your new love story. We got really clear on what you wanted. I want you to pull up your notes from week one because we're going to dive into all that stuff. Um, you know, you, you put on your notes of what was your experience of love and relationships and what was your definition. I want you to pull up all that stuff because we're going to be using it. So make sure you have it up. Pause me if you do need to go search for it and then come back after you have it in front of you. All right, so you have that stuff in front of you. If not, make sure you pause me and go do it because it matters. Um, also have a pen and paper out and ready because we're gonna be doing some homework throughout this video. You're not gonna be getting homework afterwards, I don't think, because um, we're gonna be covering the process in the stuff today. There is some homework at the end, but we're gonna kind of be doing the homework while this video is going on. You're gonna be pausing me and writing some stuff down. So make sure you have the time to do that. Um, and again, if you need to split it out into two different time slots, you can do that, whatever. I'll stop rambling so we'll make it shorter. How about that? So number one, I want you to list out all 
of your past lovers or love interests or anybody who's ever been close to your heart and you could say helped with your character development, okay? Now, this is love interests, relationships, or anybody who's pulled at your heartstrings. That also means anybody who might have abused you. Write it down. And we're gonna be, um, there's a reason for all this. I just want you to write their names down because it does matter and just list them. That is the first step. And you're like, okay, well, how early? Look, I'm, the, I'm a love bug and I got started in kindergarten, all right? Her name was Lauren. I kissed her on the hand and I got detention for it. I know I grew up in the Bible Belt, so they were like, huh, pump your brakes there, buddy. And so, all right, uh, there's, a, there's a reason and why I grew up with social anxiety. Part of it was that, but we're gonna go into that in just a second. So write out, just write out their names, who all pulled at your heartstrings your entire life in a romantic way uh, with love, relationships, or anybody that shaped how you view yourself and your, self, uh, and your self-worthiness um, around love, all right? Do that now, pause me. Hope you're enjoying the video so far. I just wanna interrupt real quick and share that there are two things that are really important. Number one, hit that subscribe button, share this with a friend. This is free. And so if you're finding this helpful, it would mean the world to me to have your support and getting this out to more people. Also, there is a community on Telegram of other people doing this work. And also I'm in there. So if you want coaching, if you want extra support, if you're struggling with something and you get a question, you can ask it in the Telegram chat. So all of that is in the description below. Just wanted to remind you of that. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, you're back, hopefully. And we're going to... After that, I want you to write down next to their name, all right? So make sure you have it listed. Next to their name, who were you right before they entered into your life, all right? So write, maybe write this out. Who were you right before that person came into your life? What was it like being you? Character traits, okay? Maybe even uh, like a paragraph would suffice here, not a few sentences, okay? Who were you? What was life like being you right before this person entered into your life? And then number three, who were you after? How did you change? Did you shrink? Did you put more walls up? Did you get more stressed? Did you get, um, like, uh, did you go, did you, did you stay stuck in a pattern and deeper into it or did you evolve? Basically is what you're looking at there. So list out. Anybody who's pulled at your heartstrings, who were you before they entered your life? You write a paragraph about that. And then who were you after? Write a few sentences about that as well. Um, I'm going to, I want you to pause me and do all of that right now because it's important going on to the next bit that you have that stuff done. So pause me and we're back. All right. So hopefully you've done it. If you're not, do the homework now. Okay. So. Number four, what belief did you lose or get? What belief did you lose or get? Your views, your beliefs, your actions. What changed about your views of love and relationships? Because again, we covered that in week one. Um, and... It's important to look at that stuff because that's literally sculpting your reality right now with love and your self-worth. So what did you learn or what did you lose from your experience with these people? Part of that you probably wrote down on who you became after, but now I'm asking you more so, what did you learn about love, yourself, life, and your views on things? Do that now. All right, you're back. So. Also, before we go on, there's this, pro, this word is probably like, whoo, it's deep, man, because there's all these emotions coming up. You're thinking about your exes and all this stuff. Um, and part of you might be like, man, I, list, I miss that person. Well, part of it is, sure, you can miss them. doesn't mean they're the right person for you um, because you have your new love story, right? So if it would have happened or if it was, it was supposed to happen, it would have. You don't want to go back to the past and go, what if? Oh, I should reach out to them because that was really a good time. And I just want to let them know <laughs> with the intention of maybe starting something up with them again. Don't do that. 
You're past that, you're evolving. The past is in the past. We're gonna learn from it, that's all we're doing, okay? We're not like opening up the past and you're gonna talk with all these people, no. You're moving on. And you might. It, it's okay to miss memories with people, you know? I miss memories with my ex-fiance. Does that mean I'm gonna call her and try to start something again? No. I'm. She's not the right person for me. But I do miss chilling, hanging out, playing Xbox with her. I miss the, me the memory was great and I'm grateful for it. But I'm gonna act right here, right now and I'm not gonna go to the past and repeat a pattern, okay? Because I've learned the lessons in it and that's why I'm able to kind of just reminisce on that memory and then create my future, right? And part of this is accepting that they're in the past, that the past is the past, like accept that that's the fact. And you don't want to go back and repeat the pattern and go back to your, you're looking for love where you last found it. I think we're past that. <laughs> um, if, you've, if you're in week four of this program, you're probably past that. But it's a good reminder, you know, of like, hey, just, we're just digging this stuff up. It's all for you. It's not to go there. It's not to start something. Love isn't scarce. There's an abundance of people in this world. All right. And it's important to note that. Cool. Hopefully we've got that under under control because you're probably thinking all these emotions are coming up. Writing things down about these people and it can be very heavy and it can be um, – all this stuff's coming up. And maybe it's not. Again, everybody's in a different spot in their development with this um, and where your heart's at. So I, ju I did want to pause and talk about all that stuff before we move on. Um, we're not doing this to go back to your exes. We're doing this to learn, to liberate yourself into a new way of being and to create your new love story. Okay. Okay. Good talk. So <laughs> did you notice any patterns with what you believed and how that shifted what you're experiencing now? Because we get to choose what we believe. And everything in life is a mirror. And relationships are the biggest mirror because we're asked to be and not do anything. So it really does help us take a look at ourselves. But if you notice patterns in your love life, we already covered all those in week one, uh, but it is important to write them down and actually get clear on all that stuff. Um, also notice, did they all end in a similar way? Like were you ending things so that they didn't hurt you? Then were you cheated on constantly? What? was the repeating way that it ended because that does matter. Um, you know, I know people that like, okay, I'm going to end it with you before you end it with me or I'm going to try to like all the, what really was the truth of how it ended and knowing that you, they just weren't your person. All this, what if, but they were my twin flame, like all that bullshit. Sometimes life is just, and God love the universe is just like, Hey, here's this person. Enjoy it so that you can build your character. We, we label things so we can hold on to hope when we have faith that the future can be better. We have faith that the right person is out there. And we can have faith that by becoming the right person and by l letting the past stay in the past and not going back there and learning from it, because that's what the past is for, to learn about yourself, not about other people. Then we can go into the future and create the love life we want. I'm spending like 10 minutes talking about this stuff, but I really want you to have the right perspective as we're going into this work. So you've listed out all your past lovers, anybody close to your heart, pulling out your heartstrings. Who were you before? Who were you after? What were the patterns and how did it end? Are there any patterns there as well? Write all that stuff down. If you need to pause me, pause me. Were you, you know, cheated on all these things? Were you abused? Were there trust issues? Was there like a lack of faith? Like what I want is impossible, so I'm gonna give up on love and then all these things. What did you make up about love and yourself from each one of those experiences? And I want you, your homework, this is a shorter video because there's a lot of writing on this one and your homework on this one. Your homework is to write them a forgiveness letter. Each one of these people, you're gonna write, not a giant letter, but about half a page worth 
of I'm sorry for, you know, I, re I learned this. What did you learn about yourself? What empowering lesson did you learn about yourself in your time with this person? Okay, that is what you are after in each one of these letters. So you want to forgive them. I'm sorry for, I forgive you for, the truth is, and then write out all the lessons that you learned about yourself. So that should be about a full page for each person. Now, to give you an example, because you're probably like, okay, well, that was a one night stand, like what the fuck, or <laughs> that was in kindergarten. Um, you know, my kindergarten crush, her name was Lauren. And again, I kissed her on the hand, got detention for it, all this stuff. I learned that I loved love. I forgave her because she like was pushing me away. And I, the truth was that I do really love love. And the truth is I, I have such a big heart and I want to help and I want to show people that and I want to express my truth. And what I learned from that experience was that if I express love, then I get punished because I expressed my love and I got detention for it. So that's why I became socially awkward and shy. And I'm so grateful that that happened. I'm so grateful that I was shy and I grew up with that extreme social anxiety and I grew up suppressing myself because I then have had the tools to become and build and sculpt myself. How I show up in society, how I show up with my friends, how I show up with you right now is a return to who I was, but I have the strategies and I have the tools and because I've broken past that barrier, if you will, of being so shy and all these, all these things that I told on myself uh, because of that experience, I've broken past it. And because I've broken past it, I'm now in front of you sharing this message and you're now getting help because I went through all of that stuff and I'm so extremely grateful that it happened and I would never do it again but I'm grateful that it happened because it, it sculpted me to being the heart guy, to learning about all this stuff. Because if I wasn't socially awkward, then my next girlfriend who wasn't until high school, um, you know, who became my ex-fiance, that story would have never happened because we got connected because my mom and her mom like knew each other and they like hooked us up quite literally. So, it's like if I was not socially awkward, my mom would have never done that and I would have never met her. And then you see how everything connects. Wow. I'm so grateful for Lauren in kindergarten. And I'm glad I got in trouble for it. That is a little bit different, right? I'm grateful for my ex-fiance because she taught me all about how to express myself again and it's okay to express myself. And she taught me how to really be free and ex of myself, to be myself and that it was okay to be myself again. And I'm grateful that she left me because out of that I had to then find myself and not rely on somebody else for that love and it, it kickstarted this beautiful quest for my self-worth and thank you so much because of that I'm the man I am today because I can love so much deeper and I can love so much harder and I can love with so much more freedom and conviction and I know what I want because I know what I don't want thank you I forgive you and I release you. That is what we're after. So that, I don't even know where that came from. Hey, guess what? That came from my heart. That's what you're after in these letters. Like write as if you're writing to them and to their spirit. Just say, thank you for that lesson. Oh my God, I learned this. That was so beautiful. I'm so grateful. We're going to the past with gratitude and just seeing the gratefulness of like, wow, you taught me how to love myself. You taught me what I didn't want. Thank you. Like, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you needs to come out from your heart because when you're in a state of complete gratitude for your past, you can create a new future. You can liberate yourself from all of these, oh, I got trust issues because they cheated on me. Well, get all that grudge and that holding on to it is that belief. So forgetting it and releasing it and thank you, thank you, thank you. 
wow, I can see why that person was in my life now. And I'm gonna learn that lesson. And guess what, guys? When you learn the lesson, you don't have to repeat the pattern. You evolve past it. The only reason we repeat things is because life is like, you're not getting it. All right, here we go again. You're not getting it. Here we go again. The reason that I was cheated on in, in my three relationships in a row, my first three relationships cheated on me. That's how they ended. The reason that that happened, because I was not learning that I was not, I was such so needy and I was not really giving them what they needed and I was very selfish. I thought I was loving like a fucking crazy. Cause I was like, why would you cheat on me? I'm like the fucking world to you right now. I'm like giving you everything except for what they wanted and what they needed. And um, I had a lot to learn about love because I thought I was equating love to, um, I thought love, I thought was love was something different than just sharing, expressing love with somebody. I was looking to, I was loving them so that they would not leave me. I was loving them so that they would love me back. I was loving them so that they, that's conditional love. You see? So I didn't learn unconditional love. I was stuck in conditional love and life was like, all right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Are you gonna learn your lesson? Are you gonna learn your lesson? Are you gonna learn your lesson? It's all about you. The a disempowering lesson to take from some of this stuff would be, um, well, you know, it's just my city or there's something wrong with me or they were, they were just fucked up. And we get so caught up in trying to like understand the other person. This is all a mirror and about, it is about you in some regard. It's the, your life and sculpting your heart and your character development, but you have to see it as that. This has nothing to do with your exes. So don't go into the story of, oh, well, they were just a fuck boy. Like, okay, well, why did you manifest a fuck boy into your life? Like what, you, you co-created that. Why did you manifest and co-create living with a narcissist for however many years? Because that says something about your self-worth in the past. Like what lesson was there for you to learn about you? Ah, a lesson. What else is there for me to learn here? Keep asking yourself that. What else is there for me to learn here? And lean into it. And I want you to trust what comes up for you in this process. Just get really curious. And if you start getting pissed, I have a saying, get curious instead of furious. Huh, why am I mad right now? Okay, well, there's some emotions there. What does that say about me? Look at yourself in this. Don't be pointing fingers. Every time you're pointing a finger, you got three pointing back at you, all right? So no more blaming, we're past that. We're gonna love always and in all ways. I'm asking for your courage. I'm asking for your heart to come at this so you can break the patterns of the past and create your new love story. This is the stuff that's holding you back because of how you're viewing the past. It's not in the past if it's dictating your present moment. If you're projecting onto new lovers or new, new, new or even your current lover of, oh my God, you might leave me and all these other things and we're, we're matching them up to the people that we were with before, like comparing and all that bullshit stops now. By seeing the past and being grateful for it, by learning all the lessons that are there for you and seeing how beautiful your path is that you get to walk down and how much of an honor it is to be doing this work for you so that you can love in a new way takes a lot of courage to do this stuff guys and again i'm asking i am asking a lot of you because i know that you can handle it so your homework forgiveness letters to each one of these people and even if they abused you how did that positively serve you that's a really weird question to ask and maybe it was like you were quite uh, you know i've had people in the past go through this program they were quite literally raped and it was a one-time instance Maybe you didn't even know their name. And it's like, well, how did that help me? Well, look at what that catapulted your life into. And how did that benefit you into becoming a stronger person? If for any other reason it led you to me and this work and you're doing this right now for yourself, that says something. Because so often we look at all, we blame things for happening for all the negative stuff. Of like that happened and that is all blah. Ah. And if we gotta blame, we gotta blame effectively. Effectively, effectively. <laughs> like of the positive. 
that's really what we're seeing here is the blessings in life and how love is always here for us. And it's not just some cool thing to say, like actually looking at it and going, wow, life is supporting me and helping me so much to become so bigger and fuller of love. But you gotta meet God love the universe and see what's happening. You can't keep blaming, you can't keep going to your hurt. You have to show up as your heart and see through the eyes of your heart and gratitude for the past, even if it was painful. Because when you can come at it with that much love and conviction, the level of freedom that you're gonna have is beyond your understanding. When you can let go of the story of the past and what happened to you, what if it happened for you? And what if you can't necessarily see the future right now, but you can see, wow, it sculpted you for a reason. The reason I almost took my own life was so that I can catapult into this work and serve and help so many fucking people and help myself as well, experience so much more freedom. I'm so blessed for the life that I have and I'm so fucking grateful that I almost killed myself. So fucking grateful for the darkness because it sculpted me into who I am today. Think about this. We go through the dark times so that we can shine our light. It's like the darkness and the light, like, you know, you, you know what darkness is and you, because you know what light is. You know what light is because you wouldn't know what darkness is. We trust people be, and your best friend is your best friend because they know all your deep, dark secrets. All that stuff that you're, shi you're hiding is your darkness, right? You're just pushing it away. It happened in the past. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there here. I'm going to hear light, 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 light. When you go to that stuff that you're avoiding, your shadow, your darkness, that's, and see it through the eyes of love and bring light to it and bring the darkness to the light, which is what we're doing right now, there won't be anything to run from. You'll have peace of mind. You can breathe and sleep at night. The reason we, why people can't sleep at night and have problems is because sleep requires peace. And so if you have uh, something under the rug or something under your bed or something in the closet or something, a big elephant in the room that you're just trying to avoid all the fucking time because it happened to you 20 years ago and it should be in the past by now. See the stress? There's a lesson there to be learned and you can sleep peacefully at night and you can have inner peace and show up with more confidence if you work through it and find the lesson there. As we do this, there will be some old emotions that come up. You already know why emotions and feeling it is how you heal it. So let it out if you need to let it out. But I, I'm asking you guys to see it in a positive light. See the gratitude of how this helped you, how this served you into who you are today and to who you are becoming. All of your past and your your past history with love and relationships at least led you to me and this work and is allowing you to show up for yourself. That I do know. And that says a lot about you and what you are going to then create in the future. So also you want to remove projection. And projection is also just another word of judgment. You have insecurities. You're projecting, oh, they did this, that, 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 that. We're all way past that, all right? Add some discernment moving forward and in discerning here of um, your, your thoughts and your emotions as you're going through it. Honor and respect yourself, but really we're just going back there to learn the lessons of the past because that's what the past is for, learning. The present is for experiencing and the future is for creating. I just gave you the secrets of time right now in one sentence, all right? So make sure you write that down, rewind and play again 20 times. The past is for learning. The present is for experiencing. And the future is for creating. We create in the present, but we can dream of the future 
but the past shouldn't control that dream. And if it does, then it controls all of your life. Because my past, my life was riddled with anxiety. And my past controlled my future because I was so anxious, projecting the worst case scenario all the time. Um, what if this, what if that, all the bad stuff. And I was just, it was consuming me in the present. And it was consuming what I thought about in the future. And it was all this stuff that I, of my beliefs of the past because I was blaming other people. I had trust issues and I was just guarded. <laughs> nice sound effect, Kevin. <laughs> of all these things. Don't touch my heart. Because I had been hurt. And I was acting out of hurt. I'm kind of talking in circles because I really want you guys to get this stuff. Hopefully this lands for you and hopefully that you are seeing through the eyes of your heart. I'm going to end the video. Today's a little bit of a shorter one. Not all the videos are super long, but that's because there, there might be a lot of forgiveness letters to write here <laughs> if you have a longer list of people. Uh, if you have a shorter list, that's great too. Just spend time on it, you know? So I'm going to leave you guys to doing the homework. Now, with these letters, you can keep them for yourself. You can burn them if you do want to burn them. But if you are going to burn them ceremoniously, like we did in, in week three, write down on a separate sheet of paper or type out maybe or whatever you want to do the lessons from each person. That's the stuff that you want to take from this. But you do want to for, let go and release um, the emotions, the heartstrings um, that are still there. And you're quite literally cutting the cord, tying you to that person because forgiveness is a one-way street. It doesn't have to be confrontational. You don't have to talk to them and say that you did this and you learned it, thank you. Like, don't reach out to them, okay? This is for you. Remember that. So I wanna make this video about trust here in week four um, it's because it's really important to kind of unpack this as we're talking about exes. You know, I was looking over everything and I was like, yeah, I have to add something about trust in here <laughs> because a lot of us project onto um, new relationships or other people because of what your ex did or didn't do that broke your trust and now you have trust issues and a lot of these trust issues and we're kind of um, in, in a culture now where people are, are guarded because of what happened in the past. You're liberating it, you're doing the work, you're learning the lessons, you're evolving, but trust can be rebuilt. Trust is also, this is something that is built. So I wanna talk about it in this video. And um, you know, I've actually heard from other uh, coaches that help with love and relationships that of like playing this game of like, okay, you, you give 10% and then they give 10% and then you give 20 and then they give 20 and that's how you build trust. And I'm kind of like, well, that's a game because your intuition and your heart knows if you should trust somebody. And your intuition and heart will guide you in the character development of the book that is your life. And so if you believe that life is always happening for you and not to you, and that life is supporting you and you you have to surrender to your heart's desires and say, my heart's pulling me in this one way for a reason, and then it's okay to follow that with discernment, right? And it's like, okay, I'm gonna choose this. And trusting in your self is really what we're after. Trust issues, if you have trust issues, it's because you're not trusting yourself. Because, oh, I trusted myself before and it put me in that fucked up situation and now I don't know if I can trust myself again. So let me try to trust somebody else. Because trust is just confidence that you're gonna get a certain outcome from somebody um, or something. And if you focus on having confidence within yourself, nobody can hurt you. And you can recognize that nobody can hurt you without your permission. And expectations are the only thing that really hurt us. Love doesn't. Um, and so is it, is it important to have expectations in a relationship? Obviously, yes. But we're looking at like bigger vision, bigger picture here. You're, you're kind of seeing what life is forging you into. It's building your strength in your character so that you can attain and become the person to have the new love story that you wrote about. It's, um, you know, a lot of us, we got healthy uh, pride or even like, oh yeah, I'm a great person. I'm, yeah, I'm awesome as I am. Great. But you also got to grow. And I think a lot of, a lot of people out there are just kind of like, yep, I'm great as I am. I'm awesome. Let me wait for that person to find me. And it's like, well, then you're just cutting off like your own growth. We always have something to work on. I always have something to work on. And when we can see that we can continue to grow and evolve and, um, kind of get off our high, her high horse, if you will. And not, it's not like a hierarchical game. Um, now there is something to be said about frequencies and, and in the, in the, in the book, um, uh, 
Quantum Love in the in the book section at the bottom talks a little bit about it, but it's not it's not a game of oh I'm a higher frequency than you. It's just literally a different level, and that that different doesn't mean good or bad. Kind of went on a tangent there. Hopefully that landed and i'm kind of every time i talk about this high level stuff guys i'm kind of like i hope they follow me and i hope i'm not sounding crazy uh because th this is big conceptual stuff of life and how life works but i think it's important to see that from the right perspective so that we can shape our beliefs that can shape our reality of love and relationships right so and self-worth even for that matter um so i already mentioned it but the only person that you can trust is yourself um, and your heart and your intuition. And the only way to know if you can trust somebody, by the way, is to give it. The only way you can know if you can trust somebody or not is by trusting them and seeing what happens. Now, the guide is in that is your heart and your intuition. We already know why it's important to calm all the other voices of stress and everything, to center to yourself. But the more you love yourself, the more you're gonna be able to listen to that voice and actually trust it. Um, you know, I've had some decisions here recently in my life, uh, where it was like, oh my God, that seems like an amazing opportunity, but something in my gut was just like, nope, don't go there. And I was like, huh, interesting. Okay. And I told the person, no, that I wasn't going to open up that, that opportunity. Do I know if that was the right decision or not? No, but I'm trusting in that, in my gut. And I feel extremely confident in my decision. I would say that's a win. Right, but the the what if game gets control gets in control of us. Like, oh, but what if this and what if that and what if I do trust them and then they fuck me over just like that other person because they have some tendencies or what if this and what if that and you're almost a, we're not we're we're not looking things at a higher level. We're kind of in the drama of it all, and you're not looking things from your as your higher self because your higher self is going to pay attention to your intuition. Your intuition is gonna be like, oh my God, that seems great, but there's this thing there, I don't know. And it's kind of like, I don't know, let me explore it. In the what if game, we play the what if in a negative scenario to shove people away, or we can play the what if game of positive. But the what if game gets in the way because um, we, we're projecting to the future and we're not seeing the reality of, of what's happening. So you can think what if, and it projects up uh, positively and negatively, right? So what if I get in this relationship and it all fucks and everything goes south? Or what if I do get this person trust and then it all goes south? Or what if I do it and then it actually works and it actually works and it actually works and that's being optimistic. It's important to do if you're attracting your new love story. But you're not acting in the present. You're not being able to be present with your intuition to decide if that's the right thing you should do because then you can project in an optimistic way and then just give your trust to people like crazy and you might keep getting hurt and hurt and hurt. So... The what if game is dangerous. It is important to see it in an optimistic way. I do strongly believe in that. Um, that's how I live my life, at least. But you need to be present with yourself and your feelings and your heart so that you can then make the right decision. We're gonna do all the work on forgiving your exes in this week. Hopefully you've already done it. Um, some of the homework to where you're gonna learn the lesson, you're gonna evolve past the pattern. That's, that's just gonna be done. So you're not projecting onto people uh, you're not treating your, your current relationship like your exes or even like how they used to be. Or you're not treating your new prospective lovers as your exes. Like that ain't – no, that, that's not fair to them, right? Um, I already covered expectations hurt. Love doesn't hurt us. Our expectations of what we are projecting into the what if is what hurts us. And if you can see that – and again, what the what if game. What if I do give my trust to this person? and it goes south, will that help me in my character development? That's a win, right? If you can see learning, that you're learning and growing from an experience as a win, then you can lean into your trust and trust it. You can trust your trust. Because if I trust this person, knowing that they're gonna leave me or it's not gonna be forever, and I say yes to that, an example, would you love even if you knew it wasn't going to be forever? That's kind of the question we're at here. Because that forever is an expectation. But if I knew that they were going to fuck me up and like mess up my trust, I'm, by, is what I mean by that. Not in a sec, just a sexual way. <laughs> but like, you know, break in trust, okay? Then, huh, I could learn from that. 
and my heart is pulling me there, so I'm gonna surrender to what my heart is pulling me to, and I'm gonna give this person my trust, because the only way I can know to trust you is to trust you, and if you do break it, will that hurt? Sure, yes, I'm not denying that, but I'm gonna be stronger because of it, because life is always happening for me, and I'm gonna go with that flow of that force of what my heart is pulling me to do. As I sit with the present-ness of where I'm at, and what's true for me. Does that make sense? Because if you see the what if game as the positive and negative, the negative being also a positive, then it's a win-win game. And you can trust your, your own intuition. You can trust your trust. Because even if I go down this path and I, I have great expectations for it, but even if I, you know, something negative were to happen, then it's kind of like, uh. for example, okay, I'm, I'm gonna have a business example in this. Um, I hired a business coach one time and had a ton of crazy good expectations and none of that was met and he and for the lack of results that we got, he was still pushing me to pay him and I was like, dude, we didn't make any money so I don't even have money to pay you, what the hell? And he almost like sued me because of it. It was this weird fucked up thing. I learned a lot about business but I also learned about a lot about myself and I have so much of a higher gauge with trust when it comes to a business as well because of that experience and for that I'm extremely grateful I, I it helped me to see things in a completely different way and I'm so grateful for that experience I wouldn't go through it again but I'm grateful for that experience and the reason I'm even bringing that up is because it was a win-win situation I trusted and it he broke that trust if you will the expectations didn't happen but it was a win for me because I saw the lesson and I'm growing and evolving past it the same can happen in your relationships and in your love life. So there was this strong, yes, do it in my heart of like, okay, this is it. This is my big break. And guess what? It was my big break, but not from how I thought it was going to happen. You know, a lot of us are like, okay, I think this is going to be like a, the big thing that's going to help me out a lot. This is going to be the big thing. This is going to be the one that helps me like give me the love that I've been looking for. And maybe they aren't necessarily the person, but they teach you something that then allows you to open up to love and join True Love Accelerator and all these things. So there's always a lesson. We're always learning, evolving, growing if you see the lesson, right? You don't want to repeat the patterns. You guys are past that, but I do want to talk about like trust. Hopefully, again, all this is making sense. Um, so your heart pulls you to growth. Your heart wants to grow and expand. Your head wants to see what's wrong, how can I survive? So if your heart is pulling you to growth, then listen to your heart. And by heart, I don't mean emotions and, oh, I think that guy's hot, so I'm gonna go fuck him even though I'm in a relationship. Like that's not your heart speaking, that's that's chemistry, okay? And that's like literally like the primal shit. Have some discernment. When I say heart, I mean your higher self. I mean that strong centered Ness, that there's peace in this decision, even if it means chaos, that there's peace in me leaving this relationship, even mean if it means like disrupting my life, there's peace in me starting a relationship, even if it's going to trigger the fuck out of me and all of my stuff's going to light up. Uh, there's peace in moving forward, even though I'm like really leaning on, on betting on all in on this one thing working out because I'm going to grow from it. And I know that my heart's guiding me in the right direction in the narrative that is my life. And I have this new perspective thanks to the True Love Accelerator program where life is always happening for me. And I'm both my problem and my solution. And there's nothing that can break me. And there's nothing that can hurt me except for myself. And if I do find myself in a fucked up situation, well, guess what? I know that I can heal it and I can know that I can take it because it is given to me in this Struggle is here for a reason to build my character. Hmm, what can I learn from this? See how it's viewing things a little bit different than I'm gonna set up boundaries. Boundaries is important. Saying no when you really mean to say no is super important. Saying yes when you really mean to say yes is super important, but it's also having that discernment which comes from intuition and awareness. As we're kind of ending the pulling the weeds out of the garden, if you will, season of this program, we're going to start to plant some new seeds and like actually build on a new foundation of the life that you want. In that, we're going to be covering all, all of the boundaries and everything else, but it's, it's important to have the perspective and the right viewpoint to build it on, the right worldview, if you will. Um, and it's, 
it's healthy to question trust. It's healthy to question, can I trust this person? Can I, can I, is this right thing to do? Because it, it allows you to listen into your heart, but you don't want to be consumed by the questions of, can I trust this? Can I trust this? Can I trust this? Can I trust this? Because then you don't have, it's trust issues. You're not trusting yourself. You literally have to go to that center spot of, I'm going to trust me. And I'm going to trust that, yes, this is what I want. And I'm going to say, this is what I want. And I'm not, there's nothing in me that's like, asking for permission. There's nothing within me that's like, oh, but do I deserve it? Well, we're gonna get to that, all that. All that stuff's gonna happen later, right, in the program. But it's kinda like, this is what I want, and I'm gonna get it, because I'm a fucking badass, and I deserve it, because, yeah, I've been through a shitload, and I've learned a lot, and I've done the work on myself and my character, and I am more than deserving of it. That's the end result of this program, by the way. And so a lot of, you know, you, you, I wanna commend you, because you've trusted me. And you've trusted this process. You're still leaning into it. You're still putting some heart into it, even though you're going in blind. Most of you guys joined this program going in completely blind. You're just like, you know what? I got some shit I want to deal with it myself. I got some 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 stuff that in me. I want to, I want to love myself, and I want this relationship to work, or I want to get the right person. So I'm going to go through this program. Don't really know what much is in it, but I'm going to go through it. It just seems right. Your heart pulled you to that, and look where you're at right now. We've cleared some ancestral shit and we've gotten really clear on what you want. We've um, done the self-love exercise with Mirror. We got so much more to do and it's treating you pretty well so far, right? Because you leaned into trust. That's what happens. The name of the game is surrender. That's why, uh, you know, at some of the retreats that I do, I do a trust fall where quite literally fall backwards off of a ladder and people catch you. And it's just a game of like, can you trust other people? Because that says a lot. And it's the one thing that you can trust, if you break it down, I have a lot of deep philosophical talks with my friends about truth. And I think truth and love are synonyms. And one of the things that we talk about is how trusting the experience, like the, the highest level of truth is I am experiencing this, you know? And so I'm experiencing, well, breath quite literally is <sighs> breathing. There's something to be said about breathing. You know, it's the light. We need air. We need oxygen. It's all around us and it's free and it's abundant. You know, when you're stressed, you're not breathing. You're shallow. You're holding your breath causes stress. We know what it stress does. We already know all that stuff from week two. When you can breathe, you can allow oxygen into your body. Quite literally, it changes the chemistry of, of your cells. You're feeling different because you're trusting. You can, when you can lean into gravity and trust that, you can lean into your breath and trust that, then you can trust yourself. This is literally kindergarten and kindergarten number, class number one on how to be human. Breathe. And it's so crazy how that one exercise of just breathe will change your life. Take a deep breath before you react to something and so you can consciously respond to it. Take a deep breath if you're freaking out and then you can listen to your intuition. You get out the noise, the chaos, and the drama and you'll be able to have some discernment, which is what you're after, so that you don't get hurt again, which is making the wrong decision because you were clouded by all these things and you weren't centered in yourself. And you had all these past conditionings, had, keyword, we dealt with them because you're doing this program, you're in this process. You're freeing yourself and I, lo I love that for that. And the only way is, you know, we repeat patterns if we don't learn them. I already said that. Surrender to the desires of your heart. Said that. So here's some more homework for you. An exercise of trust. I want you to see how much trust you can literally have in you. Because I already talked about we're so focused on doing and doing and doing and executing and doing and doing and doing in life. And then, oh, I have to be and do nothing and I have to be with another person and a partner and do nothing, that is to be in love. Being in love is an expression. It's not an action. It's a way of being. We cover this in week two. If, you, if I'm losing you guys, go back to week two and watch those videos. So being is so, that's important. That's the whole process of this program is to be in love with yourself, to be in love with somebody else. 
you got to work on you being. So your homework is to have, uh, on top of what you did in week four. So week four, you, you know, you're writing out the forgiveness letters, you're writing out the lessons that you learned, ceremoniously burn the letters, keep the lessons, key, key thing. So do that whole exercise. On top of that, with trust, I want you to set aside 30 minutes, or if you wanna push yourself and you're an overachiever, an hour, to turn off your phone, have zero distractions, turn off all electronics, you're going rogue mode, there's no books, there's no reading aloud, nobody else is with you, and I just want you to be. For that 30 minutes or an hour that you give yourself, maybe you can set a timer, just discipline yourself not to touch your phone, Put it on silent so if somebody calls you, it doesn't disrupt you, all that type of stuff, okay? But I just want you to be. You're going to lay it. This is how you start. How you start, there's a structure. Beyond that, it's up to you because I thought about doing like a recorded meditation practice for this, but that's even following a structure and then you're, you're putting your trust on me. I want you to trust you and what shows up for you because that's what you need for you right now. There's no right way to do this. There's no wrong way to do this. What's right is what's true and allowing that to come through you. You're going to lay down on the floor and breathe and pay attention to your breath for 30 minutes to an hour. And if you want to get up and dance, you can do that. If you want to cry, you can do that. If you want to laugh, you can do that. If you want to sing, you can do that. If you want to have a conversation with yourself in the mirror again, you can do that. Like, if you just want to make weird noises and be a little kid again, you can do that. Don't judge yourself and see what shows up. Because when there's nothing to do is when you can kind of unpack what's underneath the hood is when you can kind of sit with and be with you and listen to what your heart is whispering and listen to that higher intuition. Again, if you need to cry, cry. If you just want to sit there and focus on your breath, do it. You know, you can maybe, maybe you're going into a deep meditation. Maybe you start worrying and thinking about other stuff. If you start getting hectic, literally just bring your awareness to the, your lips and the oxygen hitting your lips as you're breathing. Pay attention to your senses. Be with your senses. What are you feeling quite literally in your skin, on your skin? What are you feeling internally in your spirit? <sighs> Breathe and feel the support of gravity because you're always supported. That's your homework. Um, again, this wasn't a guided thing because what shows up for you shows up for you. And you're going to trust what shows up for you. And there's no wrong way to do this, so don't judge yourself. This isn't something you pass. I know I say homework, but I, pro I should probably come up with a different word for that because you're not passing or failing anything. You're just doing and being and, and applying and expressing the actions that are going to give you the freedom that you're looking for. And you're like, I don't know, Kevin, that's a weird thing. Oh, so you just tell me to do nothing? Yes, exactly. I'm telling you to do nothing for 30 minutes to an hour. Again, I mentioned at the very beginning of this, of this uh, course, like I'm going to tell you to do some pretty weird things. Um, but this stuff is where you're going to be able to listen to the voice of your heart. If you want to follow your intuition, you got to be with yourself for a bit. You know, a lot, some, a lot of us connect to that maybe through hiking or nature. Maybe you go kayaking and stuff like that. That's, that's usually when we kind of get in a flow, if you will, and are able to listen to that voice. There is something to be said about disconnecting to connect. You're disconnecting from the world and the busyness and your phone and technology and your obligations and your uh, duties and your whatever to just be human and be in your body and be with your senses and be with yourself so that you can show up as the best version of yourself so you can make the discerning decisions on if you should trust or not because you're gonna trust yourself that much. That's your homework, I'm gonna leave you to it. I love you guys so much.